grows for a lifetime. You'll see it every time you look in the mirror. How good it looks depends primarily on the talent and expertise of the surgery team you select to perform the procedure. So it's important to do your research and select an experienced, board-certified hair transplant surgeon, especially since more and more doctors, even dentists, are starting to do hair transplants on the side for extra income because of lower payments from managed care. The problem with that is that many of these doctors will just go to a weekend course um, or a couple weekend courses and then begin practicing. They'll start advertising, put an ad in the paper, and they're really learning on the patient as they go. And this can lead to a, a very poor transplant or, or one that uh, uses up a lot of donor unnecessarily. Another reason to demand quality. There is only a limited quantity of your donor hair available. Each procedure you undergo uses up part of this supply, so it's important that the surgery is done right, so none of the precious donor hair is wasted. But how can you be assured that a doctor will provide good quality transplant work? Here are some basic questions you should ask yourself before you decide on a physician for your surgery. Is the doctor board certified in hair transplantation? The American Board of Hair Restoration Surgery was established in June of 1996 to set standards of accreditation for the hair transplantation specialty. It is the only board certification focusing on hair restoration surgery. While it is not a guarantee of quality work, the fact that a physician is hair transplant board certified assures you of a high level of competence. To get board certification is not easy. There's a very difficult set of criteria even to take the exam, and you have to pass a rigorous uh, written exam and a rigorous oral examination. Did I see plenty of before and after photos and video of actual patients? Any doctor can say they do good transplant work, but the proof of a physician's abilities can be verified by seeing photos of actual patients. The photos should be good quality that show close-ups of hairlines, which is where the hair meets the scalp. Also, make sure that there is both a before and after photo, and that they are of the same person. It's best to see examples of people with hair loss patterns similar to yours, and if possible, the same hair color and texture. Video is another way you can judge a surgeon's abilities. Look for real, believable, everyday people and make sure they have a before photo on the screen that matches. Testimonials from patients should sound sincere, honest, and should not sound rehearsed. Do the results look natural? When you're looking at videos and photographs, you first and foremost want to see something that looks natural. If it doesn't look natural to you, uh, then, then you're probably not going to want to go to that, that physician. Natural means you should not be able to tell the person has had a transplant. A natural transplanted hairline shouldn't look pluggy, like doll hair or rows of corn. The transplant should blend smoothly with the existing hair, and the density or thickness of the hair's appearance should be acceptable to you. Do all the hairlines look customized? Everyone's hair loss is different. The shape of your face, hair color and texture, future hair loss and even budget are some of the factors considered as a good surgeon determines your surgical plan. If you see hairlines that are all the same in a physician's patient before and after photos, it could indicate that you may get cookie cutter style transplant work. This is a philosophy of hair restoration that gives everyone the same look because it's quicker and easier to do it that way. One of the most frustrating things to me that's going on in hair restoration is that almost all physicians are trying to do every patient the same way. But every patient has different goals. They have different calibers of hair. Their color of their hair is different. The quantity or density of their hair is different. Their budget is different. Every patient has to have a customized approach. We have to ask the patient, what do they want? If this is realistic, then this is what we need to achieve. 
Can I see actual patients? It's good to see photos and videos, but seeing an actual patient is even better. It's a good sign if a surgeon will make patients available for you to meet one-on-one. -on -one. It means the doctor is confident about his work and doesn't mind you seeing a live example of it. Scheduling this is sometimes difficult, but it can pay off if you want to see results in person. Public seminars, such as ones put on by medical hair restoration, are also a chance to meet transplant patients and see examples of a surgeon's work. It's also an opportunity to get many of your questions answered by a physician in an informal setting. What is the plan for my future hair loss? It's easy to be focused on how you want your appearance to look now, but remember, the hair that is moved will grow where it is placed for the rest of your life. It's important to ask the surgeon how his surgery plan takes into account how you will look 10, 20, or even 30 years down the road. It's extremely important to have both a short-term game plan and a long-term plan. Although we don't have a, a crystal ball and we can't tell exactly how much hair somebody's going to lose, we certainly have a pretty good idea. Uh, we're able to wet the hair, look at it under surgical lighting with magnification, and see areas of miniaturization, which are quote-unquote future areas of loss. Uh, but we take a very conservative approach and make sure that we have donor for our, no matter how where their hair loss ends up, so that we're able to take care of it. Just like any medical procedure, you need to be seen in person to find out specifically what the procedure